Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Thursday, July 27th, 2023. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I'm hosting a year-long make-along on Instagram called the Make9 2023 Mal, and that is for you to join in the Make9 Challenge where you choose nine projects that you would like to work on this year. Post a grid of those projects to Instagram and include the hashtag Make9 2023 Mal, and then anytime that you post a picture of one of your works in progress from your board or one of your finished objects, then you can also include that hashtag and you will be entered to win one of the prizes that I draw periodically throughout the year. I have a few prizes to give away today. All of the skeins of yarn were gifted to me by Danielle of Midwest Stitches and now I'm gifting them off to you. And I've also included on all three of the prizes a stitch marker or progress keeper, I should say, that was crafted by my cousin, Allie. She does not sell her progress keepers, but they're just so beautiful. And she's sent me so many that many of them are duplicates or nearly duplicates. So I've included a few that were duplicates along with these prizes. So they are all three of the skeins I'm giving away today are Knit Picks Hawthorne in the Knit Picks Hawthorne line, which is a fingering weight. And it is a 80% superwash fine highland wool and 20% polyamide. The first colorway is called Sweet Home. And it's so beautiful in these lovely purplish pinkish shades. And then the cute little progress keeper is this little strawberry. So cute. And the winner of this prize is Beth who on Instagram is Beth Rosania. So congratulations to you, Beth, for you and all of the other prize winners. If you can please just get in contact with me either through Instagram direct message, or you can also send me an email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com or on Instagram, I'm at noblecharactercrafts. And um, just let me know your full name and mailing address and I'll be happy to get these off in the mail to you all as soon as possible. The second prize is in this gorgeous colorway, which I loved after seeing this that Danielle sent to me so much that I ordered myself a couple of skeins of this colorway. It's called Hayden. And I just absolutely love these shades of red and even purple in here. And even kind of an, almost an orangey color, but it's really like an orangey red. Anyway, I just love the shades of this colorway so much. And then the Progress Keeper is kind of a Christmas in July theme. It has this adorable little donut that has a little green spearmint, peppermint, whatever, and a little bow, and it's glittery, and it's so sweet. <laughs> and the winner of this one is at Charlie Girl Crochet on Instagram. So congratulations to you as well. And the final prize is this gray color, which is called Slate Kettle, Slate Kettle Dye, I should say. So just shades of gray. And again, Christmas in July theme with this one as well, because this one has a glittery gold little ornament progress keeper on it. <laughs> so sweet. The winner of this one is Paulina, who is at Roki Pow on Instagram. So again, congratulations to you all. Thank you so much to everybody who has been joining in the Make 9 2023 Mal so far this year. It's never too late to join in. If you haven't already, you can join in at any time throughout the year. You're not required to finish any of your projects. It's just a participatory make along. Whips are allowed and any craft is also allowed and encouraged. So don't hesitate to join in if you haven't already. I have a lot of finished objects to share with you all today. I've been very, very focused on finishing up some things that have been on my 
in the works for a while. And then also our county fair is starting tomorrow. And I got quite motivated in looking through the list of items that I could submit to the fair and thinking, oh, I could make one of those or one of those. <laughs> one of those. So there's quite a few projects that are pretty small and I was able to work up pretty quickly. And again, I was quite motivated by the categories in my county fairs list of needle crafts that you can submit that. Um, and then I was able to use up some one skeins that I didn't really know what else to do with. So it was just a good combination. And I've had so much fun trying to meet the challenge of these different categories of items that you can submit to the county fair. So anyway, um, the first item I want to share with you all that I finished is the biggest and it is this large afghan i started this project back in april and i only crocheted maybe no more than 10 rows for sure on it last time i showed it all to you which was probably i would guess the very beginning of may maybe and i haven't showed it since but i picked this back up and was able to finish it in just a couple of days it is made with bulky or super bulky now i can't remember let me look um bulky weight yarn it is a free pattern called the stargazer throw by alexandra tavell of two of wands and the yarn that i used for this was gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named kim who was de-stashing quite a bit of her yarn I showed off all of the beautiful yarn that she sent to me several months ago. And, um, well, I, I started this project shortly after she sent me this yarn, so she would have sent it to me in April, I'm sure. I started this project on April 28th, and then I just finished it on July 21st. But like I said, I put it on hold. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't really work on it at all since the last time I showed it to you. Maybe I had done a couple of rows, but not much. And then I was just able to work on it pretty quickly. Once I picked it back up, it, it worked pretty quickly because it's made in such a bulky weight yarn. I used an, an N nine millimeter hook for this project. It is made using just two rows. The pattern just has two rows. The original pattern um, calls for you to use just a main color for the larger stripes, but I didn't have enough of one color, so I used two colors as my main color. <laughs> so I have both the ivory and this mauve color that I alternated. In the original pattern, those larger stripes are supposed to be all in one color. Also, the original pattern calls for you to have four contrast colors, and I only used three. So all of this yarn is Red Heart Huga, and it, I think, is a discontinued yarn. It's 70% acrylic, 30% nylon, and again, bulky weight. The five colors that I used are, oh, I'm not going to remember which is which now. I think that the ivory is called Cloud, and the mauve is called Rust. Pretty sure of that. And then the three contrast colors I used are Pearl, Latte, and Plum Candy. So I just alternated those and left them in that pattern, as you can kind of see. So this pattern calls for you to start each row with a tail at the beginning and you leave a tail at the end. So then at the end of the project, you have all of these extra tails at the end, and then you cut some extra yarn to add in to the ends so that you have this thicker fringe along the edges, which I think is so much fun. I kind of did my own thing for that too. Um, she tells you specifically how many of each color to cut, but I just, did it in random using all five colors and just did it really randomly. And then I cut those using, well, I cut those so that they were about six inches in length. And you use the Lark, I can't remember what that's called now, Lark Hook Knot, <laughs> I don't know, some, some uh, 
there's some name for this specific way that you knot these tassels or fringe onto the end of the rows. But anyway, you don't have to weave in any ends this way, so it makes it super easy to have all of these color stripes without having a lot of ends to weave in. Um, I completed a total of 69 rows, which is actually a little bit more than what the original pattern calls for. I did follow her pattern for how many stitches to start with. And my blanket, the, the final blanket measures 46 by 58 inches, not counting the fringe. I'm gonna go ahead and stand up so you can see how big it turned out. So this is not humongous, but it's a perfect size for a throw. It's just great, especially just for one person to cuddle up in. Um, holding it like this, it reaches down to my feet and I'm pretty tall. I'm five foot 10, or I used to be. <laughs> I might be shrinking a little bit as I'm getting older, but um, I'm at least five nine, I think. <laughs> anyway, it's um, definitely on the floor right now and reaching up to my neckline, basically. So it's a really nice, cozy size and the yarn is one of those super, super soft, fuzzy yarns. I don't know if you can see, but maybe if I show you one of these tails, you can see all of this fuzziness. So it has just a core of, I think a three ply of a really soft yarn. And then it's also wrapped with this eyelashy type thread and it, it, anyway it's just really super super soft to the touch so I've mentioned before that my nine-year-old son has learned to crochet a little bit this year and he was the one that originally encouraged me to start this blanket after we, we received all of that yarn from Kim he really loved this particular line of yarn and he wanted us to start a blanket. So he actually helped me chain the, I think it was about 130 stitches to start off this blanket. And he helped me do that original chain. And then he also helped me with a couple of, of rows throughout the project as well. So that was super fun. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this blanket. I, my son asked me as I was finishing up the fringe, what I was going to do with it, what my plan was. And I said, I really don't know, should, we uh, gift it or should we keep it? And he at first said that we should keep it because he just loves how it feels. But then we were getting ready to go to my husband's aunt's house for a little birthday celebration for her. And my son suggested that we gift it to her, which was last weekend. And so we did that. I had it, I packaged it all up and gifted it to her. And she, uh, loved it she absolutely loved it and it is perfect for her because she uses a blanket often in her home because her husband runs really warm in their home and so they turn up their air conditioning quite high and so she's usually sitting covered up with a blanket so it's just perfect for her and she loved it but she said um my husband's grandma was over at their house too and they both encouraged me to enter this blanket into the fair so they, she said I could take it to the fair and enter it and then I'll gift it back to her once the fair is over. So that's why I still have it. But she absolutely loved it and, or loves it, and I'm excited to get it back to her eventually. But my husband's grandma was like, everybody just has to see this blanket. You have to enter it in the fair. So that was sweet. So I'm very, very happy to have this blanket done. Thank you again, Kim, for this beautiful yarn. It was really a pleasure to work with. I still have a ton of this yarn, enough to make at least two more blankets, I bet. So I'm excited to see what else this, this kind of yarn is gonna be made into in the future. All right. I. I should keep count of how many I have because I really don't know how many finished objects I have to share with you all, but there's quite a few. The next one I'll share with you is my fun, fun Christmas in July socks that I shared off with you all that I was working on last time I recorded an episode. And I love how these turned out. I think they are so bright and fun. 
and I'm really, really happy with them. This yarn was gifted to me by Emma of Potter and Bloom, and she gifted it to me a couple of Christmases ago. It's by King Cole. It's called Footsie Four Ply, and it's in the Christmas fruit colorway. The makeup of this yarn is 93% acrylic, 7% PBT, which is a type of polyester. It's a fingering weight yarn, and I started these on July 1st and finished them on July 18th. I cast on 60 stitches. I did two by one ribbing until the red color changed to the stripes, which was about 15 rounds, I think. And then I just knitted these plain stockinette stitch and did a slip stitch heel flap and did a little bit of yarn management by taking out one of the yellow or and green stripes that would have showed up right after the heel flap basically because I wanted these stripes to continue as they show up here. I always add in a slip stitch uh, section to the ball of my foot when I'm making socks for myself. So that's very similar to the slip stitch heel flap concept. When I get to 30 rounds before my toe decreases, I start adding in one round of slip one, knit one on the bottom of the foot only, and then I follow that with a plain knit round. And I repeat those two rounds for a total of 30 rounds before I do my toe decreases, which adds in this bit of slip stitch detail and adds a bit of reinforcement to that part of my sock where I tend to wear holes in my socks most quickly. And it has really proven to be a very effective way of um, helping that to be more strong in that area of my socks. So these worked out pretty quickly. They were so much fun to work on. I just absolutely loved the bright colors in these socks and I'm excited to have another pair of Christmassy socks to add to my collection. I also just moments before I pushed record, <laughs> just moments before I started recording this episode, I finished my knit picks the lychee socks for the month of July. So if you've been watching for a while, you know that I am working through my stash of knit picks the lychee yarn this year, and I'm making one pair of socks each month. And I am also using my collection of crazy sock lady sock patterns and working through those as I work on my knit picks the lychee yarn. So these turned out so fun. I love how they turned out. These are, this pattern is called After the Storm Socks. And they, it was a perfect pattern to use for self-striping yarn. It just worked up so beautifully, I think. I started these, oh, and I forgot to mention on the other socks and these socks, I used US Zero two millimeter needles. For these, I started with the medium size, which is a 64 stitch count. It has one by one twisted ribbing. And I did that for, well, I started with just a little blip of that uh, teal or turquoise color. And then I think it's a little over 20 rounds, maybe 22 rounds for the ribbing. And then worked into the, through the leg and I did 10 color stripes on the leg and this pattern was just so much fun to work on. I think it just looks so nice with the self-striping yarn. Last time I recorded, I wasn't sure about what color I should put in for my contrast heel flap. And so, so many of you voted on this orangey color that I dyed. Um, it was just a one of a kind uh, color that I dyed several years ago and I love how that looks. So a few of you, I had a few other colors and there were a few votes for the other colors, but the huge majority of people voted for this orangey color and I love how it looks. So I again added in that slip stitch detail to the ball of the foot here, as you can see. Um, this yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon fingering weight. The contrast heel color is also that same um, fiber content. And I started these on July 1st as well. And as I said, I just finished them just a few minutes ago. <laughs> so I love how they turned out though. Oh, I forgot to say after I um, 
finish the cuffs with the 64 stitches, I decreased to only 60 stitches as soon as I started the leg uh, because a 60 stitch count fits me the best with my gauge and everything. So that worked out really well because as you can see, there's just stockinette stitches on the sides here. So it was really easy just to decrease by a couple of stitches on either side of the pattern. I absolutely love how these turned out though. They're so much fun. Oh, this yarn, I forgot to mention, is uh, called Acrobat. The colorway is called Acrobat. And it was gifted to me, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named Adriana. Okay, next I made this sweet little whale amigurumi. And this is the another one of the projects from my Make Nine list. I only have one more project on my list that I am going to make. There is another project that I tried to make and it was a fail. <laughs> so I'm not going to be making that. I talked about that several months ago. Um, so I really only have one more project on my list that I'm planning on making fairly soon, I hope. Um, it's a shawl and I'm planning on casting that on hopefully within the next month or so. Anyway, this sweet little whale is a free pattern. It's called Wallace and Wanda Whales by Love and Stitch Crochet Company. And there are two options in the pattern. There is this plain option, or there's an option where you can add in a bunch of like polka dots with a ferrile type technique. He worked up super quickly, or she, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> so sweet though. I started it on July 16th and it only took me two days. I finished it on July 18th. The yarn that I used for this was gifted to me by another viewer of this channel named Isabella. I showed off some of the yarns that she had sent to me a few episodes ago. It is Bernat Baby Coordinates in a blue color and the white. They're both the exact same. DK weight, I believe. I used uh, the recommended hook size, I believe, which is a C 2.75 millimeter hook. And the only modification I made was that I only, instead of using a magic ring to start off the project, I do not like the magic ring. I don't, um, I'd never have memorized it. I've used it several times, but I've never memorized it. And I don't like using it because it seems to come loose for me. I just prefer to do a chain one and then I crochet into that chain instead of doing a magic ring. And it works for me, it works the same as a magic ring because you can still tighten it up just like you can with a magic ring. But I feel that it's a bit more secure than a magic ring personally. So I um, otherwise followed the pattern exactly. It was a super well-written pattern. Um, of course, you know, Amigurumi is really tight stitches and it can be a bit fiddly, but really this wasn't that difficult. It's basically, you know, the main thing is just this ball. So it's just, you're making a simple circle and then increasing and then decreasing. So it's pretty easy. The little fin, um, you start with one side and then you put that on hold and then you make the other one and then you join them together and finish off right here. And then you sew that piece on and then these little pieces are just done individually and sewn on and you put on these little safety eyes where she tells you to and I just think it turned out so sweet I love it so much I don't make amigurumi things very often maybe only once or twice a year I don't make a ton of amigurumi but when I do it's so satisfying <laughs> it's just so sweet anyway I don't know who I'm going to be giving this to but I will probably just save it and give it to a baby, a new baby or something like that sometime down the road. I think it's so sweet. <laughs> the, uh, I have several baby items that I've made. So that's why I was probably able to work up so many things because I've made a lot of tiny little things and it worked up really quickly. So the first one is well, the next item, I guess I should say is this sweet little baby cardigan. Oh, it's so adorable. This is called the Oh Baby Cardigan by Roberta Rich. It's another free pattern. 
And like I said, I had just a few, I had some skeins of yarn that I really didn't know what I was going to make with them. Um, and so it just worked out perfectly to be able to use them to make a few baby items. And this one was one of those. So you've, you may remember that I was going to use this yarn in the low rider jumper that I made recently. I crocheted it and I ended up putting a bit of this yarn into a headband that I showed off a couple of episodes ago. This is Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend in the Driftwood colorway, which is a DK weight, 50% cotton, 50% polyester. And Oh, this is so, oh, I didn't write down when I finished this. That's surprising. It really didn't take me long. I can't remember now. Oh, you know what? I bet I could remember. I bet I finished it on the 20th because then the next day I started another project. Anyway, so I, I started this project on July 17th and I'm pretty sure I finished it on July 20th. It is knit from the top down you make the button band as you go, so it's not an applied button band. It's just done in garter stitch. And obviously it was so simple, just these cute little raglan increases. I made the newborn size and I used, I did go down in needle size. I think the original recommended a seven 4.5 millimeter needle and I used a six four millimeter just because my gauge tends to be a little loose but actually I probably could have stuck with the seven because my gauge turned out a little bit tighter than what it was supposed to be so maybe it's more of like a preemie size I'm not sure but it doesn't look I don't know it's pretty small but I think it would probably fit a newborn I think but anyway it's just so sweet I love it and I really love how the yarn worked up too I think it is so, you know, there's no pooling or anything. It worked up pretty evenly with the different colors. I had these wooden buttons in my stash and I thought they were so sweet on there as well. Otherwise, I followed the pattern. I don't think I made any modifications to the pattern at all besides changing my needle size. So fun. And then, like I said, I started another project the next day, which was this sweet little dress. And this was the other yarn that I was planning on putting into my lowrider jumper. And again, I used it in that headband that I showed you. It is so sweet, isn't it? I love this one so much. So this yarn is Lion Brand. Uh, Kobu in the peach colorway, which is 50% cotton, 50% rayon from bamboo. And this is another free pattern. It is called the Newborn Summer Dress by, her Ravelry name is called N3SSY, but on the pattern it says Nessie Designs. I started this project on July 21st and it only took me an two days. I finished it the next day on July 22nd. I used the recommended hook, which was a G four millimeter. I am not sure if I made a mistake or if there's a mistake in the pattern, but I did get off on my stitch count according to the pattern and I couldn't figure out what I did wrong, but I just adjusted as I went along. When I was splitting for the sleeves, I adjusted my stitches so that my sleeves would be, would sit correctly. I think instead of skipping, you do this shell stitch when you're at the sleeve separation part, instead of skipping eight shells for the sleeve openings, I only skipped seven shells. And that worked for me to be able to fit the stitch count on there and it wouldn't be off, it wouldn't be off center, I guess. It's uh, crocheted from the top down, again, doing some really simple raglan type shaping and double crochet stitches. And then, as I said, you work into this beautiful little shell stitch. And that was very, very simple. I, again, made the newborn size with this one. Or oh, maybe it is only coming, maybe it only comes in a newborn size. 
I um, ended up adding four extra rounds of the shell stitch to add some length to it because I didn't think it was long enough. It was like about here when I finished and I wanted to use up more of the yarn that I had. I wanted to try to use up this ball that I had. I had about 80 grams of yarn that I wanted to try to use up and I thought it would look cute if I added a bit of length to it. And then I also added the scalloped border to the edge here by doing seven double crochets into each shell stitch from the rope prior. And I love how that looks on there. The sleeves don't have any extra finishing. They just have that shell stitch up there and that's just how you finish them, which I think is so sweet. The back has this little opening and this little button and I had this little heart button in my stash that I thought looked so cute on here. So that is so sweet. I loved making this one. It obviously worked up super quickly and was a joy to make. So sweet. Um, the next thing I made were these little booties. <laughs> They're so cute. These are called the Cute Crochet Baby Boots Free Pattern. I followed a YouTube tutorial and it's by Brianna K. You can get this pattern on Ravelry, I think, but maybe it's not free on Ravelry. I'm not 100% sure. This one was quite tricky. I've been crocheting for ever since I was 21, I think, so 23 years nearly. <laughs> and so I'm not a new crocheter by any means, but there were two new stitches in these booties that I've never done before. The first one, oh, I'm not gonna be able to remember what they were called. Okay, maybe I can. The first one, well, anyway, I should start at the beginning. These are made from this, you start with the bottom of the little booty and they're worked in the round here for the sole of the foot. The yarn that I used is worsted weight. I used the recommended hook again, which was a G four millimeter hook. The yarn is also gifted to me by Kim. It's a big twist value in khaki. The ivory color is one that I had in my stash, Lion Brand Nature's Choice in Almond. The Big Twist yarn is acrylic and the uh, Lion Brand is cotton, but um, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, you do the bottom of the foot and then the cream colored yarn makes these beautiful stitches but the way that you make those beautiful stitches is very fiddly by crocheting into the third loop. Maybe I have done that once before, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure. It kind of seemed familiar, but it was really tricky to get my hook into that third loop, which she explains in the YouTube tutorial how to find that third loop, but it's a little bit tricky to see where to go with your hook and it's really hard to get into the stitch. I ended up having to use an extra uh, DPN knitting needle to kind of poke into the stitch and kind of loosen it up a bit so that I could fit my hook into that stitch. That made it a lot easier, but that meant every single stitch I had to get out my needle, poke it into there and wiggle it around a little bit to open up that stitch. And there's two rows of that type of stitch. So that part wasn't super fun, it was very, hard to do. This was like an amigurumi project in a lot of ways because the stitches were super tight and fiddly. Anyway, then the rest of the booty, this little flap comes up so you can kind of see, the rest of the booty was very, pretty simple really, just done in, um, well, she talks you through it, single crochets and half double crochets. There's a fun different stitch decrease for the top of the booty here, which I love, and that was pretty simple. But then this cuff part, was made using a split stitch, I think she called it. Another stitch I'd never done before, and it gives it a super cool texture. It's very, very dense, but again, it was pretty hard to work those stitches. Now, this uh, ivory-colored cotton yarn is labeled as a worsted weight thickness, but it, it did seem like it was thicker than worsted weight to me. It was definitely thicker than the 
other yarn I used. So that might have played into why those stitches were harder because the yarn I think was a bit thicker, but I'm pretty sure those stitches might be pretty tricky. So definitely I would not recommend this pattern for a brand new crocheter because I'm an experienced, I mean, I don't know if I'd be, I'd be called an advanced crocheter. I don't know if I've done that many tricky things with crochet, but I've been doing it for a long time. So anyway, then you just add these sweet little tassels and that finishes off these booties so sweetly, I think. I am questioning how easy these would be to get onto a newborn baby though. I think it would be pretty hard to get a baby's foot into this opening. I don't know, my daughter had a little baby doll and I tried to put, that's supposed to be kind of life-sized for a newborn baby. And I tried to put the doll's foot into this booty and I could not get it in but they're cute to look at. <laughs> I'm not sure how practical they are, but anyway, they were, you know, kind of a struggle to make, but they did work up really quickly. I made them in only one day. I started them and finished them on July 22nd. So, but they were a little bit fiddly, <laughs> but you know, it's a free pattern. You could sure try it out. Um, but I don't know if I'd recommend it for someone that is brand new to crochet. Then I still had some of that Lion Brand Nature's Choice yarn that I used for the booties and I wanted to use it up. I had just a little over one skein of that yarn and I found this another free pattern online. This is called the Crocheted Baby Sweater by Beth Koski. I think that this one is free for the newborn size and then maybe you pay for larger sizes, but I just made the newborn size. Now on her pattern, it said that you only needed, I think five to 5.5 ounces of yarn. And the skein that I had was five ounces and then I had just a tiny bit extra, but I ran out of yarn. But again, I was using this um, Nature's Choice yarn, which did seem thicker than a regular worsted weight. I would I would guess that it's more of an Aran weight for sure. Maybe even bordering on bulky weight, but anyway, this sweater is supposed to have long sleeves and it's also supposed to be longer in length, but I ran out of yarn. So I just made what I could. And I think it turned out very, very sweet. So again, this is work from the top down in a very, very similar way to the dress that I made with the raglan increases. In fact, I did make a modification to the raglan increases. On those increases, you're supposed to have a bit of a eyelet that runs throughout, right down the raglan increases by doing a chain one stitch instead of, and then you would have a hole wherever you did a chain one stitch. But instead I did the same thing that was in the little dress that I made where you do a three double crochet stitch like a granny stitch into the raglan increases. Well, that's what makes the raglan increases is you do three double crochets into one stitch to increase your stitches. So instead of doing double crochet, chain one, double crochet, I did three double crochets so that my raglan increases would be closed instead of having that open eyelet detail, which I guess would have used up a little bit more yarn than the original probably. Um, let's see, I use the recommended hook, which was an H five millimeter hook. And I had to eliminate, oh, this is definitely <laughs> a confusing pattern. On the second row of this pattern doesn't make any sense. And I went on to Ravelry and looked at other people's project pages and I did find someone else that mentioned that. There was a lot of people that did not mention that second row, like it was no problem, but it definitely does not make any sense. And one other person did say the same thing. She said, row two doesn't make any sense. Just ignore it and follow your intuition, I guess, for how to do the stitches. Which if, again, if you're not a new, cro or if you're a new crocheter, it would be quite difficult. But if you have some experience in crocheting, it's pretty obvious to figure out what you're supposed to do. So anyway, um, I just continued with, um, double crocheting and then doing three double crochets in the corners, basically. I was only able to complete 13 rows before my, ran, my yarn ran out. I can't remember now how many more rows I was supposed to do, 
but I think at least five, maybe seven more rows, something like that, for the length of the little cardigan. And then I didn't add any length to the sleeves. This is just where the sleeve separation was, except this scalloped border I did add in. So I finished off the body and I didn't, you know, I only had enough to do the 13 rows, like I said. And then I went into my stash and grabbed another skein of this ivory cream colored yarn in just a regular cotton. It was a mystery skein of cotton, but it's more of your typical dishcloth type of cotton. And it was in this, it matches perfectly. You can't even tell a difference, but you can tell a difference in the texture. So the texture of this Nature's Choice yarn is super soft to the touch. It's lovely and squishy and it's just got a super soft touch to it. And then the cotton that I added to the edging is a lot stiffer as you typically, you know, as which is typical with regular dishcloth cotton yarn. So that's a little unfortunate that that's along the edges but it just needed some yarn to finish it off because it didn't look finished as it was. So anyway, I used that worsted weight, just regular cotton yarn. And again, I added a scalloped border along the edge of the bottom here, as I did with the little dress I showed you, and I did that to the sleeves too. So again, I did um, seven double crochet stitches, and then I skipped a stitch and did a slip stitch into the next stitch and then skipped a stitch and did another seven double crochet stitches to make this scalloped border and I love how that turned out and then I just single crocheted along the button bands it's not really a button band I just sewed on a button to the top here oh I did that along the neckline as well just single crocheted all along the edges and then I didn't have to make a buttonhole I just can slip this little button through the stitches since the crochet stitches are so open, just slip it into the top of one of these little stitches here. So it just closes with that one button at the top, which I think is so sweet. And look at this combo. I love this together. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> I think that would be so cute. And then you could, if you could manage, oh, my little dress is falling if you could manage to get these little booties on the baby as well, it would be so sweet to see a newborn baby in this little outfit. <laughs> or these little booties will look cute with the little cardigan too. So I may gift this as a set someday with the warning of Good luck getting these booties on your baby's feet without hurting them. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. A few more finished objects. I, with the leftovers that I had from that skein of mystery ivory cream colored yarn, I was so generously gifted a free pattern by a lady that watches this episode, or this channel, I should say, named Olya. She um, has some beautiful designs, and I happen to uh, favorite this dish or this uh, kitchen towel pattern of hers. And she saw that I just favorited this pattern, and then she gifted it to me, which was just so sweet. She sent me a message and said, I love watching your channel, and I saw that you favorited my pattern, and so I wanted to gift it to you. I was like, wow, that's so generous of you. So thank you so much, Olga. I surely appreciate your generosity. And it was a super fun pattern to make. So this is called the Lemonade Kitchen Towel by Olya Mikesh Designs. And I was able to, like I said, use that natural colored yarn, which again is a mystery yarn, but it was worsted weight, definitely 100% cotton yarn. And then again, the blue that I have here is also mystery, but same thing. You can definitely tell it's a worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. And I had a ton of little scraps of this blue yarn. Actually, my friend Tina had um, detangled it for me. I got it in like a D stash 
that my local library did. They did like a craft swap earlier this year and I had gotten just a package of this blue colored cotton yarn, but it was all tangled up, which I didn't realize when I picked it out. But anyway, Tina untangled it for me and it ended up being like five little mini balls that she ended up detangling. Anyway, so I had probably, I would guess that that was about a full skein of the blue, maybe a little less. The ivory was definitely a little less than a full skein of yarn, but um, I thought it was gonna be enough for the pattern, but I ended up running out of that cream colored yarn a little bit earlier than what the pattern called for, but it, I made it work anyway. So this pattern, um, I used the recommended, no, this pattern is originally written using DK weight yarn, I believe, but she does say in the pattern that you can use worsted weight or thicker yarn and just adjust your needle size. So I did go up in my needle size to a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle. And the original stitch count, I started doing this using the original stitch count. And since I was using thicker yarn, it turned out a little bit too wide according to the measurements of the finished object. And so I ended up out taking, I ended up taking out one lace pattern repeat. So here it is in its entirety. And I took out one of the lace pattern repeats here just to shrink it just one, you know, about that much. And that turned out to be a better size, I thought, for a kitchen towel. I absolutely love the little lace section on the bottom of this towel. I think it's so sweet and it was super fun to do very quick and easy, and it just lays so nicely, I think. Um, and then, as you can see on the main part of the towel, it's just made using stockinette stitch using the main color, and then you use the contrast color to do these garter bumps. And I was able just to carry my yarn up this one side, so I didn't have to cut my yarn and weave in ends at all very much anyway. I did have to shorten it a little bit though. The original pattern calls for you to do more stripes than what I was able to do. I was only able to make 18 stripes in this contrast color. And then the original pattern says once you finish your stripes that you're supposed to go right into a garter stitch edge. I did add a, one more section of the stockinette just to add as much length as I could to the towel. And then I just ended up with more rows of garter stitch at this one end. The original pattern only calls for you to do six rows, I think, and I just knit until I ran out of that blue yarn. So I did, I think, I have eight garter bumps, so I did 10 extra rounds of garter stitch, or rows, I should say, 10 extra rows of garter stitch. But I think it's so sweet. I'm gonna be gifting this to my mother-in-law probably for her birthday, which is coming up in October. She just recently painted an accent wall in her home that is this blue color. And so she's trying to add a bit more blue into her home decor to go along with that accent wall. And she has an open concept house. And so her kitchen kind of flows into her living room, which is where the accent wall is. And so I thought it'd be fun for her to have a little kitchen towel. I think it's so sweet that will go along with her new fun color of her wall. I just loved making that. That I started on July 23rd and just finished it yesterday on July 26th. Okay, little break. My last finished object is actually two finished objects, but the first one that I'll show you did not turn out. And after I show you, I'm gonna be ripping it out. Um, and then I made a different one. So for a while, I have been admiring knitted berets, but I've always been a bit skeptical on starting one because it seems like a lot of work and I'm not really sure if I'm a beret person. I like it when I see them, but I'm not really sure if I'll wear a beret or if I feel comfortable wearing a beret or like how I look in a beret, <laughs> but I just wanted to try it. And then I thought I should look to see if there are any crocheted beret patterns. That sounds cuter anyway, a crocheted beret. Anyway, because <laughs> that would work up so much faster. And then I'd get an idea of whether I even like berets on me before I invest in knitting one. 
So I did that. I looked online and I found a free pattern again, a lot of free patterns this time, um, by Drops Design. It's called the Green Gables Beret and it also comes with a cowl pattern, but I only made the beret. It comes in two sizes, a small medium size and a medium large size. And yeah, I made this one. <laughs> so you can see my yarn is still attached because this is the one that is, uh, it didn't turn out, it turned out too big for me. So I'll try it on so you can kind of see how it looks on me. It's not terrible, but it just turned out a little bit too loose, I thought. I just thought it might look cuter if it was smaller. It's not terrible. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't rip it out. Maybe I should keep it. Maybe I'll wait. Let me know what you think. <laughs> well, you can compare it to the next one that I'll show you. So you can wear a beret in a few different ways, I think, like this, or like I had it before, you can kind of put it over to the side. Since I have bangs, I have a few options with whether I want to tuck them in or not. You can pull it way down too, I suppose, and have it more like this. But then I kind of feel like it's a mushroom head. <laughs> I don't know if I like that look as well. But anyway, Oof. the pattern was super fun to make, super quick as well. I love this swirly pattern that that, that has on the top there. It's crocheted from the center of the top here and you could just crochet out. Very, very simple, double crochet stitches, American terms. And, um, oh, this, I, I've always heard, I've never made a drops pattern before, and I've always heard about people making them and them being really quite difficult to understand, but the ones that I've always heard about have been knitted patterns. And so when I saw this was a crocheted pattern, I thought, oh, I can do anything in crochet. <laughs> I was a little bit overconfident <laughs> and thought, I'll figure out crochet, that's no problem. I, I'm not gonna be stumped by that. But actually this pattern is only charted and I've for some reason have been able to avoid a charted crochet pattern for 20 some years of my crocheting life. I have seen them crocheted charts in patterns that I've made before, but usually it comes with both written and charted options and I always just do the written options. I've never even attempted to try to figure out a crochet chart, I don't think that I can remember. But this only came with a chart and I thought, I'm gonna figure this out, this can't be that hard. And it wasn't. I was able to figure out the chart and follow it and it wasn't bad at all. This is a very simple stitch, however. So, you know, it's not a complicated chart, but anyway. I was very happy that I was able to figure out how to read a chart in crochet pattern. Um, okay, so for this one, I made the small medium size. I used the recommended hook, which was a G four millimeter hook. The yarn that I used is by Louisa Harding Yarns in the Cassia line, and this color is called Pine. It's a DK weight, 75% wool, 25% nylon blend. And yeah, the pattern, like I said, was just very, very simple to follow. I was a bit confused on one section. It says, do this row and then repeat it three more times total. So I wasn't sure if they meant, are you supposed to do that row three times or are you actually supposed to repeat it three more times for a total of four rows? But it's only a one row difference. I ended up doing it for the four rows. It's where you're knitting just, or where you're crocheting just straight without increasing or decreasing. But anyway, obviously you're just increasing on the top portion. Then you do a little bit of flat crocheting and then you do some decreases here for the brim. And yeah, I mean, there wasn't, it, uh, it, I guess it could be a bit confusing, again, if you're a new crocheter, but I was able to figure it out and I was happy that I was able to do that. So let me know how you think that looked compared to the next one that I made, which I used the same yarn for this one, but in a different color called silver, which I was surprised by that color name because I think it definitely looks blue. It really matches the towel quite well. Anyway, um, so I followed the pattern again, but I just went down a hook size to a 3.5 millimeter hook. And then I accidentally made a mistake, which also decreased my stitches on these little eyelets. 
on the original pattern, you're supposed to, when you're getting into the main increase section here, you're supposed to chain four on each of these. And I was only chaining three. And I got, I was on the very last row of the increases and I realized, am I supposed to be chaining four here? <laughs> I had just done it. I The green one I started on July 24th, finished it the next day on July 25th. And then I just did and made this one completely on July 25th. So it's a very quick pattern to make. Um, but anyway, I was, again, overly confident and thought, I know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to be going and doing these increases with chain threes and realized at the end of my increases here that I was actually supposed to be doing chain fours for the majority of the increase section, but it still lays really nicely, I think. This one's been blocked, so you can see it. I don't know. It's just laying really beautifully right now. And then for the that one section that I thought was a you know, that I was unsure if it was three or four rounds. I only did three rounds for this hat to make it even smaller. Um, I think that's the only changes that I made for this one. But it is a smaller fit. So, I don't know, maybe you can't really tell that it's that much smaller. <laughs> maybe it's about the same as the green one. It is smaller when I hold it up to the green one. But after blocking, it is it maybe did grow a little bit in blocking. I don't know if I'll wear it. I think the green color maybe suits me a bit better. Even though I have blue, green colored eyes, I don't know if this color suits me as well. I don't know. Is it cute? I don't know. I can't decide if I will wear it or not. But I just kind of wanted to make it, like I said, because I thought it would be fun to see what it looked like. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know if I'll wear it or not. My daughter tried it on, and she has blue eyes, too, even bluer than mine. Her eyes are, like, really icy blue. And she looks really pretty in this as well. So she likes it. I might gift it to her. Maybe I'll keep the green one myself if you guys think it looks okay. I don't know. So, anyway, these hats were super fun and easy to make. And, like I said, it was just a fun experience to try to work from that chart. So, those are all of my finished objects. How many was that? Did you keep track? <laughs> I did not. Let me count real quick. One, two, if you count both hats. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven finished objects. What? It's been an hour I've been recording. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, so I only have one work in progress to share with you all today. I have not put much work at all into my venation shawl. It's been severely neglected these last few weeks since I recorded last, but I'm excited to get back to that. But I have put a little bit of extra work into this striped tee that I'm working on. And I'm very excited about how it's coming along. So this project is, well, I'm following, I'm loosely following a pattern. Well, I'm, well, I'm kind of following a pattern, <laughs> which is by a lady named Mary Papillon. I was, helped with the pronunciation of her last name, which I've heard the name Papillon before from the dog and um, just the French word for butterfly. I knew that, but I thought it was spelled differently. There is a town near me here in Nebraska that's called, pronounced Papillon, and it's spelled like Papillon, but with an I-O-N at the end instead of just O-N at the end. And I thought that that was the correct way of spelling the word Papillon, the French word Papillon, but I think it's spelled as Mary's last name is spelled. So anyway, the pattern is called the Color Splash T. Now I am modifying this pattern quite a bit. I did not start with a provisional cast on as she calls for. I just cast on regularly. I am, let's see, I am only making this, this, garment is made flat for the first part like the top part and then it's joined in the round under the underarms but i am not doing that i am making two front pieces instead of a separate back piece that has a higher neckline because i want my garment to be reversible um I, my stripes are different than her pattern calls for my like my stripe width and she also uses lots of different colors in her stripes and i'm only using two colors the needles I'm using are US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. The yarn I'm using is Knit Picks 
comfy fingering in ivory and black, which is 75% Pima cotton and 25% acrylic. I started this project on June 29th. And as I said, last time I recorded, I wanted to get through five stripes before I joined the shoulders just by doing a whip, a whip stitch. I tried doing a mattress stitch, but it looked super sloppy. And I ended up just using a whip stitch, which I like the looks of that better. I wanted to join the shoulders together. Like I said, I'm knitting these two pieces flat, but I wanted to join it together so that I could try it on and make sure I liked the fit of it. And so I was able to join, um, started sewing the sides together as well so I can just get an idea of how it's fitting. So I uh, have knit a couple more, well, one and a half more stripes basically on this piece. The progress keeper there is by Million Dots and that's marking where I was last time on that side. And then on the black side, I've knit two full more, two more stripe sections from the last time you saw me working on this. And that's also another, this is a cloudberry. And then the other one is a black raspberry also by Million Dots. So I am really happy with how this is turning out. I like it and I can try it on for you all so you can see what it looks like. And like I said, it's reversible. So I can choose if I wanna have the black side on the front or the cream side. But here you can see how it's fitting. So it's just gonna be super simple. Oh, also she includes some waist shaping in the pattern and I'm not gonna be including that in mine. I'm just knitting completely straight I'm not sure how long I'll make it yet, but I'll just keep trying it on until I like the length of it. And then I think that there's maybe some I-cord finishing along the edges, if I remember right. But here you can get an idea of how it's fitting. So I'm super happy with the fit of it. I think it'll be great. It looks the same on the other side, but just, I mean, the fit is the same, but just with the cream in the front. So I think that'll be so fun to have that garment too, have, you know, and it'll be a fun layering piece too. I can wear it all year round, I think, because I could wear it underneath, you know, a black cardigan or a cream cardigan or a jacket, a denim jacket or something like that all year round. So it can be a nice summer garment to wear on its own or then layer it in the cooler months as well. So I'm very excited about that. So those are all of the projects I have to share with you, a ton of finished objects, which I'm yeah, really excited about. Uh, like I said, our fair starts tomorrow. So tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be taking all of our projects over there. My kids are entering a few things as well. And Chris's grandmother is an artist. She paints. And so we're going to be meeting her there. And she's going to be taking some of her paintings to the fair. We just love our county fair so much. It's a highlight of our summer for sure. So we're super excited that that is getting started tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are doing really well. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.